Hello there guys, Glixer here, and welcome to Space Engineers. Today I have a different type of video for you. My other videos have focused on ships that I have created, but today I'm bringing you something entirely different. I'm going to teach you how to make your own vanilla small ship. This is going to be quite a long video, so before we begin, you may want to pause the video, get comfortable, and grab a refreshment. Alright, let's get going. But before we start, I have to say that the methods I'm going to show you are my own, learned through experience and observation. This does not mean, however, that they are the right methods. The most amazing thing about this game is that there really is no right way to do something. So just remember that as you're watching this video. Alright, now that we have that out of the way, let's get some basics down. Number one, before building a ship, I always draw it out. This is not necessary, but it can make building immensely easier. In this tutorial, I'm not going to plan and simply make it up as I go along. This is not exactly, again, the right way to do it, it is simply the way I'm going to do it. One of the main principles of building in Space Engineers is the conveyor system. Conveyors are basically pipes that connect different parts of the modules of the ship to allow them to share inventory. Everything from oxygen tanks to hydrogen tanks use this system. They all have a conveyor on at least one side of the module. There are also, in small ships, large conveyor ports and small conveyor ports. Large conveyor ports can only connect to other large conveyor ports and vice versa. It may seem kind of confusing now in your head as I'm saying this, but trust me, I reference this many times throughout the video, and by the end, you'll be a pro at conveyors. And finally, number three. There are three types of thrusters in Space Engineers. Ion, Atmospheric, and Hydrogen. Ion thrusters are easily identified by the blue glow they emit when powered. These thrusters work great in space, but in atmosphere they produce around 11% of their overall thrust, depending on the thickness of the atmosphere. Atmospheric thrusters are easily identified by their spinning turbines. These thrusters work great in atmosphere, but produced no thrust in the vacuum of space. The third type, hydrogen thrusters, require hydrogen tanks and a conveyor system to function. They work great in both atmosphere and space, and are generally more powerful than the other two types, but because of this they consume fuel at an enormous rate. The reason hydrogen thrusters can work anywhere is because their fuel contains an oxidizer. On our small ship, we will be using all three types of thrusters, so that we can leave a planet's atmosphere and go to space. Alright, now we have the basics down to build a small ship in Space Engineers. You learned that Space Engineers uses a conveyor system. You also learned that there are three types of thrusters in Space Engineers, and their are different constraints and different environments that they work in. That means we can now start building. I will be building this ship in Creative, and you could just as easily construct it in Survival, but you would just need to weld an awful lot. To start, we'll need a platform. I usually make mine an uneven width so that I can do the next step. In the next step, I place a large block in the center of the pad. This is kind of a mechanics lift, and it makes it easy to access the underside of your ship, which would come in handy in survival and creative. Next, we are going to open our inventory and grab a landing gear. This will anchor the ship to the lifted block so we can build on it. Once you have the landing gear, make sure it is the small ship landing gear and not the large one. Line yourself off with the front of the block, and once it is over the block, drop it. It should turn green, meaning it is locked into place. Next, we are going to grab a cockpit from our inventory. I'm going to use the fighter cockpit. It is a little bit more expensive and has a different conveyor output than the normal cockpit, and in my opinion, it looks better. However, for this demonstration, both will work. Now I'm going to grab a large reactor from my inventory to give the ship power. Pay attention to the direction of its two conveyor ports. I'll be placing mine with the conveyor ports vertically. It is time to grab an oxygen tank from my inventory. This will store oxygen to fill the cabin to allow you to breathe in space. I'm placing mine with a large conveyor down. I will now grab a connector and attach it to the bottom of the oxygen tank. 
The connector will allow me to transfer cargo when I land at a base or a station, and also adds four small conveyor ports so that I can connect my cockpit to my reactor and my oxygen tank. This ship will need cargo space, so I'm going to grab a medium cargo container and place it so that the conveyor port is facing down, allowing me to connect it to the connector. We will also need a hydrogen tank and a hydrogen thruster to provide that much needed boost to exit the gravity of a planet. I'm going to place my hydrogen tank horizontally and connect the thruster to the large part of the end. If it is connected properly, the hydrogen thruster should light and begin glowing, which means the fuel is flowing into it. Because I'm a symmetry freak, I'm going to go to the front of the ship and press M while looking at it. A red plane should appear vertically. I double click to set the plane, and now I can press N to activate the vertical symmetry. You can see the outline of this part on the other side of the ship, showing where it will go. I'm going to grab batteries and place them on the sides. The idea is that the reactors will charge them so that they can be used in case of an emergency. Later on, I will move the batteries to the sides of the cargo container as they get in the way of another part. Now the ship's basic systems are complete. The next step is to add conveyors and connect the different components of the ship. I'm going to grab the small ship conveyor, conveyor elbow, conveyor junction, and conveyor pipe to my toolbar. Now I'm going to connect all of those conveyor ports that I purposely left on the bottom. Planning to have ports close to each other saves your ship from looking like the underside of a bathroom sink, and it saves materials. Right here I mess up and connect the hydrogen tank when it's actually already connected to the cargo container, which isn't the end of the world, it just adds redundancy and a cool feature later on. When I hop on my ship and press Y to turn it on and get out again, all the connectors should have a little green light, meaning they are correctly connected. If they display red lights, something went wrong in your plumbing job. If you have all green lights, give yourself a hand. Now that that's done, the ship needs to be able to fly, and for that I'm going to need atmospheric thrusters. Alright, after placing the thrusters, they are on and spinning, so I'm going to make a little modification to direct the thrust coming out of them. This has no effect on the way the ship flies, it simply makes it look better in my eyes, but is not necessary if you don't deem it necessary. A common technique I picked up and started using is to build off the three remaining sides of the large atmospheric thruster to create a body for the ship. To this, I place some slope pieces, and then I hold the control key, and then I click and drag out the number of blocks I need, releasing the mouse to place them. I'm going to speed the rest of this up as it is just bodywork that doesn't affect the performance of the ship. You can still watch it and observe my technique, but as I said earlier in the video, my technique is not necessarily the right technique. In the meantime, let's talk about thruster placement. A ship generally needs thrust in all directions, however, this is not always true. For instance, on a planet, you don't really need upward thrust to push you down, because gravity will do that for you. It can be a useful attribute to flip over your ship if you crash it, uh, but for now I'm going to leave it off this ship. At some point during the building process, you most likely will need to access the place where we place the large block and the landing gear and they will get in the way of your building process. So you're going to need to hover your ship up to expose the areas that you couldn't see previously. To do that, you're just going to make sure you have enough upwards thrust. I believe I have eight downwards thrusters total on this one, four on each side. And you're just going to, you don't need gyroscopes for this, just make sure you go and you press P to unlock your landing gear and slightly tap space to hover up a bit and then you can get out of your ship, delete the landing gear, delete the block, and your ship should be hovering. Now in survival, this isn't a good thing because it'll be wasting energy and you'll have to find a way to get around this, but in creative, there's no problem with letting your ship hover while you work on it the rest of the way. For the ion thrusters, I will be placing thrust in all directions as obviously there's no gravity in space. For the hydrogen thruster, we only have one pointing backwards, and we only really need it for that to use it as kind of a booster. We don't need hydrogen thrust in all directions because we have it covered by the other types of thrusters. Now it's time to place some gyroscopes. I'm going to open my inventory and grab the gyroscopes, and I found a convenient place under the cockpit to place them. You really only need one or two gyroscopes. I'm using four because I like how it looks, but that's not necessary. The more gyroscopes you have, the faster your ship will turn. On large ships, you usually need a lot, but on a small ship like this, you won't need that many. 
I'm also going to grab an antenna and place it in between my gyroscopes. An antenna is important as it allows your ship to communicate with other ships and bases and it also lets you know where it is if you're not next to it or in it. As you can see here, I'm leaving this conveyor junction open and I'll explain why. I'm going to place a small air vent here, which is a necessity for anything that's flying on a planet. You see a cockpit is airtight and if there's no air in it, it will suffocate you. If you have an oxygen tank, or even if you don't, you're going to need an air vent to refill the oxygen tank or bring air inside your cockpit, so this is where I'm placing mine. If you're observant, you might notice that through this video I make a mistake. I actually don't put any horizontal left to right atmospheric thrust on this ship, and I kind of notice it later. I didn't alter it, and I probably won't alter it before I put it up on the workshop, because it's still plenty flyable, and those ion thrusters, even though they're only operating at about 12% uh, of their normal thrust, they do provide enough left to right thrust that's adequate, but just don't go turning your ship sideways when you're in midair, because it will probably crash. Now that I'm done with the basic design and shape of the ship, it's time for a paint job. To open the paint menu, press P. You'll see a multitude of options here. The hue changes the color, the saturation changes how bright that color is, and then the last option changes how much white is in that color. For instance, if you notice on the color wheel, there's no black, and if you take that saturation, that last option, and you slide it all the way down, you're going to get the color black, and all the way up to get the color white. So there's a lot of options, and you can mix an infinite amount of colors here. I'm going to choose some basic ones and start to try and get my paint job together. I have preferences when painting things in Space Engineers. As you can see, I usually paint the hydrogen tanks orange to signify that there's an explosive gas inside. I also really like to paint stripes that go from the tip of the ship to the tail of the ship, but again, this is just my method and you can do whatever you think looks good. job is done. I added a royal blue, a white, and a black to my ship in stripes, and I think it looks great. Alright, now that the paint job is done, I'm going to set up my ship systems. I'm going to hop inside the cockpit and press K to bring up the menu. Now I'm going to search for atmospheric thrusters. I'm going to group all my atmospheric thrusters so that when I'm in space I can turn them off so they're not wasting energy. So I'm going to type in atmospheric and I'm going to see all the thrusters come up. I could hold control and click every one to make a group out of them, but it would take forever. So I'm going to click one and then hold control and A and it should select them all. Then on the right in the block group section, I'm going to name them Atmos Thrust for short. And then I'm going to click save and it's going to make a group out of all my atmospheric thrusters. I also made a group out of the batteries so I can turn them off and on when I want. Now I'm going to go set up my toolbar. I press G to open my toolbar menu, and I drag down the groups or parts that I want to my toolbar, and when I release them, I press the function that I want them to do. For instance, I drag down my air vent, and then when it gives me the option of what I want to do, I press depressurize on off, so I can depressurize the air vent when I press 1. You can continue filling up your toolbar with functions in this manner. If your toolbar gets full with functions, you can press Control 2 and go to a second toolbar and add more functions. To go back to the previous toolbar, just remember to press Control 1. Now that the toolbar is all set up, I go and I depressurize the vent, and when I go through my menu and look at the oxygen tank, you can see that it is slowly filling up with the air from outside.
Now that the ship is complete, the only thing left to do is to take it for a spin. Before you take off, ensure that you have enough gyroscopes and upward thrust to sustain your ship in flight. And finally, exit the cockpit, look at the ship, and press Ctrl C. This will copy the ship to your clipboard in case you destroy it. With that out of the way, you can now hop back in and take it for your first successful flight. After constructing your first craft, you are now a space engineer. Now that you have the basics down, you can go wild and build whatever you want. Just remember if you crash, press Ctrl V to bring up the ship that you saved to your clipboard. You can now repaste it and begin again. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something along the way. If you did in fact like it, you know where that like button is. And if you'd like to see more like this, go ahead and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.